Hello and welcome to this short discussion where we are going to um, look at a very famous uh, paper uh, by uh, Dyson. So the paper uh, is uh, this one. Um, uh, hold on, because I can't apparently highlight stuff. So it's going to be a bit difficult uh, to highlight things. Uh, I'm going to provide, uh, of course, a link to the, the paper um, in the uh, description. But the bottom line is that it's a uh, it's a, it's a paper by Freeman Dyson, very well-known uh, theoretical physicist and mathematician, um, and who has worked um, at kind of tidying up uh, all the, some of the mathematical aspects, let's say, um, of um, QED, so quantum electrodynamics. Um, now, in this particular paper, uh, which uh, he published in 1989, so that's very far from being a recent paper, but it's actually often completely uh, unknown, uh, so and hidden in a sense. So I prefer to actually talk about it. And in this paper called Feynman's uh, Proof of the Maxwell Equations, he actually recounts um, an anecdote where uh, Feynman was looking for a new way of framing uh, the equations of physics, a new set of axioms to start from. And the idea was uh, to develop a new theory uh, to move forward you know, with uh, things having to do with quantum mechanics, uh, perhaps uh, relativity, uh, and so on. And um, obviously, I'm not going to go through uh, all of the details here. This is simply a three pages long uh, paper. However, it is quite uh, dense uh, indeed. Now, if people want to actually go through the, the calculations, uh, feel free to, su to do so with the, uh, with the link I will provide. I may even do a sort of simpler version uh, of that particular derivation, maybe in a um, uh, to the whiteboard uh, video. Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, but if you would like me to, to do one, please uh, do let me know in the comment section. Um, now, what the paper is about, as I said, is the, uh, basically a sort of proof by Feynman of uh, Maxwell's equation starting from, and that's what we are going to see, assumptions 1, 2, and 3. Now, the assumptions uh, 1, 2, and 3 are uh, basically the following. So this is F equal MA uh, on, the, on the one hand. Okay, so that's the very first equation. is simply F equal MA from Newtonian mechanics. And you see that this force can even depend on velocity. So this is really, really general. And then the other thing that is added is actually some sort of uh, essentially quantum mechanical uh, commutation relations. And in fact, uh, yeah, I mean, th that's how they are seen. There are commutation relations uh, between these uh, things. So these numbers, if you will, the variables do not necessarily follow the traditional um, kind of uh, commutation rule of the product, but instead have something a bit more complicated added to it, which is very, very reminiscent of uh, quantum mechanics indeed. Now, these are the only three assumptions. So here, uh, this is a traditional commutation relation between, let's say, the x and y variable of a single particle. They need to commute with each other. But then here, this is the, again, traditional equation uh, that the position and momentum uh, in the same direction of a, of a particle do not commute with each other. And the claim which is phrased here in equation four is that essentially from these three assumptions only uh, and some further mathematical derivation, we can deduce that the force can be expressed necessarily, in fact, as Ej plus what is essentially is a cross product of the velocity with a field called H. And that these fields further actually satisfy the uh, Maxwell equation divergence of h is zero and dh of the dt plus curl of e is zero. Okay, um, and and basically the other two, uh, the, the other two equations um, are going to follow uh, as well um, in terms of definitions afterwards. So the, the thing here is um, is that basically the goal is to start from there and that's what uh, Dyson does and that's what he reports from Feynman. Um, and I'm just going here to, to scroll kind of down. So you see that after some equations that are essentially algebra, so using the um, uh, commutation relations uh, as they are, and then kind of moving forth, uh, there is a first here definition of H, 
which is further redefined in that particular fashion in equation 16. Um, and then finally, um, some equations are derived uh, for it. Uh, that's fair enough. But then E is uh, defined uh, as well. Okay. Um, and where then this satisfies the traditional curl of E is equal to uh, time derivative of H uh, here. So the bottom line is that um, from starting from again, like mixing, if you will, Newton and mechanics with some aspect of quantum mechanics, you actually get electromagnetism. Um, and there is an interesting comment uh, from Dyson uh, here. And in fact, he claims that uh, when he presented that to students, um, so that's a long time ago, right in the 80s, students were apparently unsurprised. Um, and he, he actually goes on to explain kind of why this is surprising. Okay, so he actually, you know, retrieve E and so on. And names, uh, please read it, read it, it's like just three pages, that, um, uh, that you know, Feynman thought actually that this, his plan of his, his program of his uh, had, had failed because he thought he would find actually some avenue and he didn't find any because he retrieved uh, electrodynamics essentially. Um, now, the, the point that is fascinating is that, uh, in fact, Dyson disagrees with Feynman that this is a failure. And the reason why it's, it's really a fascinating point is because, uh, as Dyson mentions, if you think about it, uh, you start from classical Newtonian mechanics, which is so-called Galilean invariant, you apply some commutation rules, which in principle don't really touch uh, on these Galilean invariants and simply add to it, uh, basically, this notion of incompatibility, if you will, with some variables, so X and P, uh, as usual. Um, but then out of it, you get um, electromagnetism, which is uh, essentially a Lorentzian invariant. So it's not Galilean invariant, it's actually Lorentzian uh, invariant uh, theory. And that's really where the surprise lies. And that's why uh, Dyson uh, wanted to share it with others. And that's why he shared it in this particular publication. Now, it could be that he's really hiding something. Um, some more uh, theoretical works have actually, you know, worked on it and tried to find whether there was anything that was uh, really meaningful in there. And there is some uh, interesting physics and mathematics having to do with uh, um, doing some calculus, but with a sort of discrete time. Uh, and that, that's going to be, that, that is very, very useful in this particular formalism. Um, so that being said, that's it. So that's the paper uh, by Dyson recounting uh, a proof by Feynman uh, of the uh, Maxwell equations. And I thought it was very insightful. So I hope uh, you, you can have a look, or at least if you're uh, happy enough with the descriptions I've made of it, as in so be it. And if you've got any comments, please let me know in the comment section below. Okay, so see you in the next uh, video.